I'm gonna jump into a text-based project to show you how to use Dataclay's template. I gave you a quick overview of Dataclay's templator in the last video. So if you haven't seen that yet, head down to the description and check out that link just to get a sense of what we're about to talk about. Now in this video, I wanna jump into a project and take you step by step of applying the effect and leveraging the script in order to spit out some renderable assets. The best way to use Dataclay's templator is to already have a project that you wanna apply these settings to. So I'm gonna be using a project that I shared in the last video it's a really simple graphic. It's a text-based final score graphic that is gonna help you understand how you can leverage the spreadsheet using text with an After Effects with the Templator plugin. So here we are in my After Effects template, and I actually wanna jump right into two distinctions to make that made a big difference for me when I first started getting into Templator. And that is the difference between our script and if i click on one of these layers down here effect data clay templator settings so the key here is in order for anything in the script to drive any layers within your comp you need to have the templator settings effect applied to the layer so let's go ahead and add that templator settings. I'm just gonna copy this one. And let's go ahead and add it to the appropriate layers here. And I'm gonna paste. So as long as I have this templator settings on my layer, templator will be able to drive that layer. Now, there is one other catch though as well as having this templator settings on the layer, is that this title needs to be the same as the title of a column within our Google Sheet. So let's go ahead and jump over to our Google Sheet so we can see what that looks like. So when you first get into the script, you will want to make sure that you link up your data field to your Google Sheet. So if I click on the Google Drive icon, it's gonna pull up a spreadsheet setup and you're gonna to wanna to sign in and then you're gonna be able to find your Google Sheet within your whole list. Let me just pull up this Google Sheet here so you can, you can compare it. So I am under my matchup graphic team text and that's the title of this Google Sheet. And then underneath of it, you can see my tabs here across the bottom. So I wanna make sure within this that I am I select team matchup because that's where um, all the text is that I want to connect to. And then you simply go down here and click link worksheet. And you will see that it populates up here exactly as you have selected it. So now that I have that linked up, I have templator settings. Let me go back to my Google Sheet so I can also show you move this up here so we can see our text layers. So you'll notice that my top column here is identical in name to the layer that it corresponds with. And, and that is essential to make sure that Templator works. So I have a way team name and I have a way team name down here. And if these, if these aren't identical, things won't work. So make sure that whatever you have across the top of your column is identical in name to the layer. However you do that, whether it's copying and pasting into the spreadsheet or copying from the spreadsheet and pasting onto your layer name. Okay, so I have four, four different schools listed here and then four listed under the home team name with the scores outlined and on either side. And then I also have this team color hex, both for the way and for the home team. And I decided not to use this, this text color, but I left it in here in case I wanted to change that later on. So um, I actually didn't link these up. These are just dummies right now. But for the away team color hex, the way that I'm bringing that in is the six character hex number is being brought in through a text layer. So away team color hex, away team color hex is down here. So 
this is getting mapped to the source text. So if I turn the source text on and go over this layer and I solo it, 00274C. 00, if I'm on frozen like tech, 00274C. All right. I, I'm basically outsourcing the hex decimal number to a text layer and then mapping it to my background, which is a shape layer. So if I turn this on, if I hit EE through the color, I'm using the hex to RGB expression, which converts a hexadecimal number to RGB. And you need these quotes on the front and back because this middle part is just text. And in order for this to work properly, it needs to be a string. So these quotes are the quotes on either side to make this, turn this into a string so that After Effects can read it and return the correct color. All right, so I did that for both the home team and the away team. And I made these guide layers just to make sure that they never exported. So whether it's on or off, you just right click, go up the guide layer, and it will never render. So I actually have a final score comp here. And if I go into that one, you can see that it's not there because I have it as a guide layer. Guide layer. Okay, so what else do we need to understand to make this work? Well, let's quickly talk about the text. So we already outlined that this is Frozen Lake Tech. And so I'm gonna do the away team name. So if I copy this, I'm just gonna create a new comp. Sure. And I'm gonna paste this in here. Do if I reload my data, Frozen Lake Tech. That's huge, right? Well, off to the side for a second here and make sure we fit this up. So the cool thing about having this templater setting layout, we have the scale factor in here. And right now it's set to zero. It's not impacting anything. I can actually adjust this so that the text automatically sizes for me and fits within the bounds that I've outlined. So if I set this to 90, and I hit refresh, it shrinks down. Well, what this is doing is looking at the comp. So if I were to create a solid and just double click so it fills the comp, if I went into scale and made it 90, and put this under. So you can see that if I had this all aligned properly in the center, you can see that the text is taking to 90% of the comp size. So if I made this 80, let's see, made the shape layer 80. When I hit refresh, it should snap to the size of my shape because it's looking at the full comp and taking the percentage. So this is also a way where you can create your text and have it live within a certain width. And you don't have to add any extra expressions to it to constrain it within that width. So I just wanted to pull that apart and show that to you because um, it's highly valuable to, uh, to keep your comp light while still giving you some flexibility. So let's hop back into our comp. And away team name, I'm going to set my scale factor to 90. So it's 90% of the width. Now, if I refresh, it didn't really do anything because that's where it was before. But if I hit back, you can see that Sunshine is the other school name. That is sticking to that same, the same box here is the 90%. If I go back to another one, Storm Coast, 90%. Even though um, uh, the text is changing in size because it's fitting this text within the 90%. So let me go back forward again, and you're going to see Sunshine is a little bit bigger. So it's always going to fit 
within that same percentage of the comp that you have outlined. All right, so what about the home team here? If you noticed before, my home team name. Let's go to the last one. Was off the sides here. So if I, I can do the same thing. Layout. And again, I want it to be 90%. And I'm just going to hit refresh. Great. Now it fits exactly where I want it to. All right, so now that you have the general gist of making sure that you have both the both the templater settings applied to the layer, making sure that your Google Sheet titles across the top of your columns are identical to the layer names because that's how it's being read by After Effects to make sure that these are identical. Once you have all this set up, there's a predefined term for rendering, and that is render status with this dash between all lowercase. So let me just delete these because that was from the previous video. So now they're all empty, but first let's go into our preferences and set this up so that we can talk about rendering. I actually have this set up to where this is my main comp here that I'm working in, but I set up this final score comp two so that I can get it to loop. You'll see I just duplicated cut off and, and adjusted it so that this graphic can loop over the top of each other. And this is the one that I actually want to render. So let's head over to the, the script and I'm gonna click on preferences and that's gonna pop up our preferences. And in this window in the upper right hand side, we can choose the comp that we want. This comp one was that text comp that I added, so definitely not. Final score comp's the main comp. You could render that one, but I want to do this final score comp two because this is the one that is going to loop and this is for social, so I want to make sure that this loops. Now within my bot settings, I can set this to render or replicate. Now within AE2023, I can um, render this out as an H264. So in previous versions, I would have set this to replicate to create an After Effects project that the, and then tied it through Media Encoder with some watch folders so that it would automatically export. But now that After Effects has the ability to render H.264, I'm just going to go ahead and render directly. And some of these other settings over here, you don't really have to worry about, at least with the way that we're, we're doing this. So the primary things we're, we're worried about here are this comp, the comp we want to render, outlining the bot settings for render. And there's some limitations with the Google Sheet. So you can leave these at 0.5. And then let's go down here to the bottom, the templator features. So I've already, I already have templator activated here. So just make sure that you're activated here. And that's all you need to do on this, on this pop-up. So let's go ahead and hit OK. And our output options here, uh, we have a destination outlined. So I have a render watch folder and an output already set up. So I'm gonna leave that as is. You can go ahead and hit load settings and, and module templates. And this is gonna load up what you would usually see in your render queue. So I have best settings and I'm gonna change this to H264 since I'm on AE2023. And then I've also outlined a, pr a prefix here. So baller effects dash final score dash, because otherwise it's gonna create um, a number, a, a, a huge long string. So this, this allows me to at least to know that this is what it is. All right, and once I have all this set up, I can go ahead and hit enable bot. All right, so let's go back into our Google Sheet with our bot set up. We're on our final comp here that's gonna render, that's our render comp. And what we need to do is go in here to render status and change our render status to say ready. And we're just gonna type in ready for all of those. And as I mentioned, Google Sheets does have a little bit of um, a processing delay, just link up time here. So 
it's it's not super long. You know, that was pretty quick. So it's processing, you see it, you see it rendering, and then it says done and updates as it goes here. So we're queued. This is processing, this is doing the second line. So Storm Coast. So the next line is going to be Sunshine versus Fine Arts Paradise. So let's watch to make sure that's what it is. Sunshine versus Fine Arts Paradise. Great. 10 to 12, right? Everything is going well. Now Frozen Lake Tech, 56. Harvey Oaks Huskies, 21. Cool. And this is all real time. So let me go. And then we have our final output here. Cool. So that's a run through of how you can use Templator to automate some of your process here and make sure you can spit out content on the fly from a template.